My guest now is Dr. Joyce Hai. She's Executive Director, Salt and Light Ministries. Uh, Mr. Sarabidi Ako is unable to join us, but definitely talk about uh, his works as well here on the show. So good morning to you. Good morning, my mother. Thank you for coming. I'm curious. <laughs> Where is your stool? <laughs> <laughs> it's in my father's house. <laughs> Best place to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we get into uh, the work of the ministry, a lot yes. of things have been happening. Yes, um, true. Have you seen a Nasus video? Alas not, and I'm quite upset that I was not invited to go and watch it. But I've seen some of his other exposés. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is not like any of the other ones he's done. I suppose it isn't because uh, the justice system affects everyone. I mean, DVLE does not affect everyone. The cocoa industry does not affect everyone, important though it is. You know, SEPs, you know, mm. but justice, you know, the justices are like God, you know, making sure that there's fairness when two people come with an issue. Mm. So any hint of bribery, any hint of corruption, is really heartbreaking and also destabilizing I would I would say you cannot have a nation that cannot trust its justice system because it's like your last resort so it, it's, 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 it's very disheartening to say the least and uh, I read uh, one of them uh, saying he was set up and I was amused and I said but of course an investigative journalist will set you up, but you don't have to fall. If you fall, then it is your habit to fall, you know, so... Did you suspect such a thing was happening? Oh, I think for years uh, there's been talk. And one of the things that the current Chief Justice has been harping on all the time is for the justices to overcome the perception even if it's perception, to overcome it by not doing what the perception says they do. But you know, you have people crying out all the time, sometimes saying, you know, if you don't have money, you won't get good justice. You know, if you don't know somebody, you won't get good justice. And occasionally some of the sentences also, you know, just you, you make you wonder. I remember um, I, 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 I am part of the prison's ministry. And one time, I went to the female uh, in, in Sawam, and there was somebody there who had had a quarrel with a landlady or something, or a family member, and on remand, you know? And uh, sometimes you wonder, so... A judge put her there. Yeah. Perception is very bad. And to actually be caught allegedly be caught, you know, mm. proving the perception yeah. is, is very unfortunate. You've been worried and indeed you've talked about leadership for such a long time. Yes. What and kind righteousness. Of, yeah. And righteousness. What kind of leadership response uh, are you expecting from this expose so far? Well, the thing is that uh, in Ghana, uh, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. Mm. So I think the process that uh, the Chief Justice has set up is, is good. I mean, there, there's, uh, there seems to be fiscal evidence, but take it that the person is innocent until proven guilty. Mm. So the process is that. I'm, I'm sorry that um, they are also trying to use the law, but I guess that's their right, to use the law to circumvent mm. some of these things. But as I said, is their right. Um, to, you, to use the law to but see you, whether they can extricate themselves. Were you from expecting it? that they would stay quiet and go through the, the processes set up and then excuse themselves possibly? Well, you see, um, whenever you are caught, let me say, pants down, none of us is wearing pants. <laughs> when you're caught pants down, uh, there are various reactions. So it's not unexpected. I'm not surprised that. Some of them, in spite of the evidence, w would say, you know, things are otherwise. And that's what makes us human. But for me, my pain for them 
is, is, is the fact that they are not going to have a good end. You know, I think that the beginning is, is, is not really what is important. I mean, these people have children, they have spouses, they have relatives, and to actually physically see something like that happening with faces unmasked, you know, is, is something which is very disturbing. And I'm not surprised that they're trying to claw back whatever reputation that mm. they have. The critics will say perhaps if we had gone to the Supreme Court, we'd have even seen things that would have If we had us. gone anywhere, that is what is frightening in, in our country. The perception of corruption is everywhere. And that is what is frightening. Uh, I think wherever you go, in any institution that you go, I was alarmed, for example, uh, during the BC when some parents thought it was okay to continue with the exam even though it was known to have leaked, you know. And you hear stories of some schools wanting to get 100% and therefore colluding to get the questions ahead of time. Why would you do something like that to your child? Why would you want your child to cheat at age 14, 15, 16? I mean, what kind of a life is the person going to have? And you go further and parents are willing to do anything to get their children into schools for which they didn't get the opportunity. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Is it our fault then that the, it is uh, some judges are, are involved in this kind of practice? Of well, bribery? the thing is that, you see, the giver of the bribe <laughs> is as guilty as the taker of the bribe. Mm. And that's why this was an investigative journalism. And I'm sure that he's, you know, a nurse knowing the law would have gone through all that it takes to be an investigative uh, um, journalist and to get what he got, you know. So when you give it, you are also as guilty as the one who takes it. Mm. And if I want to influence you, Mamaga, I want to influence you. Okay, you are eliminating me. I'm the no, v. no, no. Uh, I mean, Mama V. Mama V. Oh, ga. V. <laughs> v. Okay, V. You are the little one. So, Mama V, if I, if I need to actually bribe you to have this interview, I mean, it is, it is so undignifying, isn't it? It's your work. You do it. But why must I bring you money before you do it? And why would I bring you so low as to think you, you need to take money before you do it? And how much could I give you? And that is what, for me, is, is so... Uh, disheartening mm. you know some of the sums of money uh, yeah you know but we're not taking care of them well right now I think their salaries are fairly good they get taken care of they have vehicles they have petrol they have you know so besides besides Mama v, we choose the work we do it goes with its uh, <laughs> ups and downs mm. You know, we are not forced in, into going, choosing certain professions. It comes at a cost, yeah. you know. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, the state shouldn't do anything about it. But uh, I, I really believe that it should never be an excuse to take mm. bribes, to be corrupted because you're not being taken care of. Um, you, you can always go and get another job. That will give you more money. Sure. If that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But you see, to be a judge is not just about money. It's about also inputting somebody's life, impacting somebody's life. Bringing justice is, is something that really is, is part of making people uh, as good as they ought to be. Mm -hmm. The one who's done wrong gets to know that, yes, I did wrong, I tried, whatever, I, but there was fairness. So whilst I don't like being made guilty, I know the process was so well done that I can walk away with my tail between my legs, mm. uh, you know. Let's also talk about the subjects, and hopefully you've been following it. Uh, 
new register or stick with the old one. But that's not exactly the argument because Let My Vote Count Alliance hit the streets. It didn't quite end well. They mm. wanted to hit the streets again on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, and that didn't happen. All the processes, these things that have been happening, they're accusing the police of going through the back door to secure <laughs> an injunction to stop them. Well, actually, you know, um, demonstrations of all sorts, except, of course, nonviolent demonstrations, a part of a, a democratic dispensation, you know. So sometimes I think uh, it's best to let it happen. Make sure it doesn't get violent. I don't see why it should get violent. It shouldn't. I don't see why it should get violent. It shouldn't. And sometimes I listen to the Let My Vote Count people, and they, they, they claim, you know, they didn't go with any kind of weapon. Mm no sticks, no stones, and so on. And um, some of the pictures that have come out also show that they didn't. But then I'm not here to uh, indict the police. They also claim that <laughs> they were attacked. Mm. So it's, a, it's unfortunate. You know, because we've come so far in our democratic dispensation, we don't need this kind of thing. But should we allow people to pick it at the EC? It's an office. It's an office. Uh, there's even a, there's even a, um, what do you call the, these high-rise buildings next yeah. door? And there's a church down the road somewhere. Yes, you know, yes. <laughs> so it's it's not a, but then uh, picketing, you can always restrict picketing. I think uh, even if ten people or five people sat there, that would be picketing, all right. You don't have to take two thousand people. Mm. You don't have to take five. You don't even have to take a hundred people to go and pick it. So I think picketing in itself is, is not, any. people sit there, they hold placards. Sometimes, you know, they sit quietly, they hold placards and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think because we, we, we maybe we haven't properly experienced it, we, okay. we, are, we are worried, you know. But you uh, know, the, the, the res the, this uh, feedback or response from the police is making some people worry about 2016 because lots of things will be happening particularly when we're drawing closer to the elections. That is why we must allow certain things to happen to avoid that kind of thing. My own, my own personal feeling is that you don't wa want to work with a document which is so controversial. It doesn't help. Because whenever there's controversy, you know, there never seems to be total fairness. So, frankly, there's so much controversy that I think that the best thing to do is to really stop all the controversy and get a new one. That's my personal feeling. Sure. To just shut up everybody. So, when you lose, you lose. You know, uh, when you win, you win. Mm. So, I, I think that is a... Working with a document which is so controversial is not good. You know, because you never come out clean. You, 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 you never know whether uh, even what you're doing is, is uh, the right thing because you will always have somebody who say, look at this. You know, I hear there's even a, a UNDP report that uh, uh, states that uh, even the EC, I, I heard it on radio, I, I haven't read the report, the EC is not fully in control of the IT. Mm. that has done the biometric. And as I said, I haven't read the report. Here is page 27 of the report, or page 15 of the report, whichever. We'll look for it. Yes. There's a, apparently a UNDP report mm. has come out, you know. Um, so it, it, it's good to go through all this and really start on a clean slate. Sure. You know, it's good to start on a clean slate. Okay, so now let's talk about So you took advantage of me. <laughs> No, I Mama didn't. V. It's just content sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's unscripted. <laughs> Let's talk about the ministry now. Yes. Um, I, I remember the ministry from Radio Gold. Yes. And oh, you do? Yes. Yes, that's now we're awesome. <laughs> yes. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yes, yes it yes. has. Well, so we added this music, the sacred music part mm. to the ministry. And the reason for sacred music is that... Uh, you know, music is supposed to uplift. It, it does something to your inside. It, it helps you to have 
a good mind. It helps you to think. It helps you to reason and that kind of thing. And it's not always the cacophony that does that. Sometimes you need very soothing mm. music. And we have fantastic Ghanaian composers, amazing Ghanaian composers. We sing their songs all the time. And sometimes we don't even know yeah. they are the, ori ori yes, <laughs> the originators. So we decided in the ministry to select some of the contemporary ones. You know, we, we remember the Dr. Ifri Mamu, we remember Emeritus Professor uh, in Ketia, and, and so on, and others who've gone ahead of us. But currently, there are a number. For example, there's a professor of English at uh, uh, Winneba University, and he's such a prolific uh, composer. Sechi Beidu, mm. we've done his work. Uh, Ken Kafui, who used to teach at Tachimoto School and later on went to teach at the Institute of African Studies, we've done his works. Uh, James Barigama, who's the music director of uh, the executive director of the Harmonious Chorale, we've done his works. There's a gentleman also who teaches now at um, Methodist University called Timafo Arthur. We've also done his works. We've done, um, um, what's his name? We did one, what was his name again? But so what, you, you, you just bring them? We bring and them. Then you we bring them. And what we do is we, we, we look for their works. Okay. And then we go through the works and we see their impact on society, mm. even though people don't know that they are yes. the composers. Mm -hmm. And then we bring them for people to know that, oh, so this is the one who wrote the song. Mm. And so far, it's been good. We started about eight years ago. OK. And um, it, we started at the British Council. Place was packed, overflowing. Then we went to the physicians and surgeons. Place was not big enough. Went to the National Theatre. Place was not big enough. So we, you know, so we're where going. Was, so where this are you going one, now? To the stadium? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> this one, we're going. We didn't get the National Theatre. Uh, because I think there's a program there. So we're going to uh, the Calvary Baptist Church at Shiashi. Okay. And um, we're going there on the fourth, fourth Sunday. We're showcasing him this Sunday. This Sunday. This Sunday. Okay. At 4 p.m. prompt. And then the week after, because he grew up in Kumasi, mm. we're going to Kumasi. Okay. I think he started some choirs in Kumasi and uh, they, they will kill me if I don't give mm. them the opportunity to also mm. uh, experience him. So we'll go to Kumasi. Okay. Uh, KNUST, mm. Great Hall, the week after. This is more like a celebration. It is a celebration of the composer. Mm. It's a celebration of the composer. Okay. So yes. who's expected or who's invited? Everyone. And I hope you'll be there. I'll look Sunday, out for you. Sunday, 4 p.m.? 4 p.m. I'll look out for you. I'll come and record a bit for our program. That would be lovely. Okay. It would be absolutely Oh, fantastic. now I've committed myself. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> yes. So we, we really are looking for, forward to, to that. Mm. It promises to be a very good e evening. You know, sure. and, and some of us will be very surprised some of the music we would hear. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Right. All right, then. Um, so, uh, Calvary Baptist? Calvary Shiashi. Baptist Shiashi. Okay. For those who will not be driving themselves, you know, they can get off on the motorways. It's off the motorway, and there's a, a, a footbridge that can be used. The parking space is enormous. So, if, if you're coming with your car, you don't have to worry at all okay. about parking because they have sufficient... Uh, parking space. Mm. Uh, the room is also large and airy because it's not completely completed. So you don't have to worry about not having air conditioning. So uh, come in your numbers. Um, you don't need free. a ticket. You just No, you just come. Okay. But put a little money in your pocket. Okay. So that we can take an offering. It's, it's very expensive uh, organizing it and it's, it's not easy getting support. Mm for it. Okay. But here we are, yeah. US, you know, multi TV supporting it and we're very, very grateful mm. for this exposure. We're honored actually to yeah. have you. Thank you. <laughs>
Bring me again when you have more interesting yeah, things Yeah, we will. We will <laughs> definitely, No, I've definitely. committed myself. Yes, okay. So we both have. <laughs> yes. But I'm grateful for your time this Thank morning. You Thank you very much, Mama mm -hmm. V. It's been wonderful talking to you. Yeah, you too. Uh, my guest, Dr. Joey Sai, Executive Director, Salt and Light Ministries. We're all going to the Calvary Baptist at Shiashi Sunday, 4 p.m. And we're going to celebrate Mr. Sam Kwekwa Saribidiakon, who is a composer, pianist, and an organist. And I say bring the entire family because usually young people like us, we don't even know the people behind the music. And so it will be good to see everybody there. Make sure you're there. Stay with us. I'll come back with talk right after this. Thank you.